Hey, what's up? John Sonmez here from simpleprogrammer.com. So I just did a video or a video came out today. I don't really want to link to it, but I'm going to just because it's it provides some context for what I'm going to talk about today because I don't really want to talk about net neutrality anymore. It's such a such a boring fucking topic, honestly. But but here, I'll, I'll point to the video and you can check out it if you want and then you can watch the video and unsubscribe and tell me what an idiot I am. If you got to do that, you got to do it. I understand. It's cool. So here's the thing, though. What I want to talk about today is in relation to that video and the, the kind of shitstorm that happens when I release a kind of video like this that most programmers or most of my audience disagrees with, okay, which is that a lot of the time in life, most people, okay, and, and you know, and I'm susceptible to this as well, right? I'm not going to exclude myself from being susceptible to this, but most people just parrot what they've heard and what other people have told them. They don't actually form a real educated opinion on something and research something for themselves, or even without the research, just think, just go through the thought process, the philosophical thought process of thinking about something before they form an opinion. Or even bar, barring that, decide to not form an opinion on something. It, it's perfectly valid, right? So. I, I put this quote on that YouTube video where I said that, I think it's a Scott Fitzgerald quote where he says, essentially, the, the mark of an intelligent man or an intelligence, of a higher intelligence, is to be able to hold two conflicting viewpoints in your, in your mind at the same time or to entertain both of them. There's a lot of different quotes that, that people have, I think Ralph Waldo Emerson has one similar as well and Aristotle has one. But well, the fact that so many people have made a similar quote as this has to speak to you to its relevancy and how important it is. So I, again, I'm not going to, I'm going to try to avoid rehashing the net neutrality thing as much as possible again, but I will say that with something like that, a lot of the controversial topics that I talk about on this YouTube channel that I for myself have considered both viewpoints and could be swayed either way in, in some way. You see what I'm saying? So what I mean by that is is that I've thought about, like I don't automatically, like just because someone says, oh, this, right? And this happens a lot with political parties, right? I mean, if you're a Republican or Democrat or whatever it is, or you know, whatever political party, or you support Black Lives Matter, or you're against it, or you're pro-feminism or not feminist, or gun control or not gun control, all these things, if you think about it honestly, about most of these controversial topics, abortion, no abortion, right? Theology. <laughs> are you a Christian? Are you not a Christian? Are you, you know, is, is uh, Muhammad the prophet is not, you know, all of these things, okay? A lot of them, the only reason why you are in belief of, of something, right, is because you're just parroting what other people have told you. You haven't actually really investigated it yourself. And then, like I said, I am guilty of this. I'm not going to exclude myself. I try to rise above it as much as possible. And that's one of the reasons why I make videos like this. Like some, some of you might be like, John, you're shooting yourself in the foot, man. You're an idiot. Why would you make a video on being against net neutrality? Mo a large portion of your audience, it's not all of it now, is, is software developers and programmers and they really, really like net neutrality and they're just going to unsubscribe and call you an idiot. So why would you do it? Part of the reason why to do something like that is, is because I'm not afraid to be wrong if I'm wrong, and I'm not afraid to express my thought process logically to, to, to people regardless of whether they agree or not. You see what I'm saying? Like, because I'm not just parroting what someone's told me. Like my, my, I didn't, my opinion on, on this subject, on net neutrality, came from my own thinking. It came from me logically thinking about the situation and thinking about what I think is preferable or what is the right principle in coming up with that. Again, you don't have to agree with it. I could be wrong. I mean, my thinking could could have some problems with it, right? I mean, it's, it's, to some degree, it's almost like, well, what is wrong? Like on, on certain things where it's a matter of opinion, like it's, it's really hard sometimes to clarify whether something is wrong. You need some kind of criteria to decide whether something is right or wrong. But but my point is like, why would I make a video like that is really one of the main reasons why I publish on this channel, not just why I would say it, but why I publish on this channel is because I want you, okay, and, and some of you are gone and it's too late, but 
I want you to be able to think rationally about this, to be able to say, whoa, I don't agree with John about this subject, and but then to say, well, wait a minute, hold on. Let me at least hear what he says, because I like a lot of John's stuff. I agree with like 90% of which I, I'm a fucking simple programmer fanboy. So this thing is like causing me strife. Like how could my, my how could my John, my hero, like think this stupid shit? I don't know what to do with myself. I don't know what to do with my life. It's such a crisis. I want you to have that moment so you can say, oh, wait a minute. Okay, hold on. So is it possible that I feel this, this emotion because I'm so charged up about this thing because I've been told that I need to think and believe this way and that this is the crusade that I need to be on and that's not necessarily logical or it's not actually my opinion. It's just the, the side that I'm on. It's just a team that I'm rooting for because I've been told to root for this team. I want you to have that thought process. Again, it doesn't mean at the end of the day that you agree with me. You don't have to. That, that's totally cool, right? But at the end of the day, what I would want, what, what I would think is beneficial to you, why I would publish a video like that that would arguably be harmful to me and my brand on this channel is because I would hope, my bigger hope would be that maybe that might slap you in the face enough to say, even though I don't agree with John, I, I could see some of the points here. Like I, like I could see that I kind of had this emotional reaction because I was just, I was triggered because I was told this and I didn't think it. So that at least at the end of the day, you've analyzed your viewpoint on it and said, okay, does this make sense? What what do I actually think based on my own logic and my own interpretation of the thing? And I'll give you a quick story here. And I know this is going to result in some weird comments, but I'll just tell it to you anyway. I'm I'm not going to delve into details about theology. That's just a topic. I mean, at least... For now, I'm not going to broach very much on this on this YouTube channel because I don't want to get into religious wars be, for, because it's for no reason, right? Okay, I mean, I'll give you some some stuff on... Philo- for my philosophy, you should be able to somehow, somewhat, not somehow, but somewhat figure out my theology to some degree. But there was a time, a long time ago, when I was teaching a Bible study, actually, so a, a men's Bible study, okay? Now, again, don't draw any conclusions from that just because I said that, all right? I just, this is just a story. Just a story. Calm down. Calm down. Okay. So anyway, I was teaching this Bible study and I was teaching on the book of Revelation. Okay. And I took a different approach than the church normally would take in this, or, you know, most Christian churches would would take, which is to adopt this mindset of the whole Left Behind series. I forget the, the authors of this, but, you know, this interpretation of Revelation which has just been parroted by people. They just believe this because someone told them this and this is how it's supposed to happen and how it's supposed to work. And instead what I did was I said, let's read the book like chapter by chapter and let's see what it says. (laughs) Like let's let's drop our preconceived notions. Let's drop what Timothy LaHaye, that's what it is, has told us it means and what other people have told us it means and let's read it and let's see what it actually says. I mean, yeah, there's, you know, we could look into the Greek and there's, you know, some scholarly things we could do. But just from a surface level, let's just read this book and let's see what it says. Okay? And some people were just like, no, this is heresy. Okay? But some people were interested in that. And then it was kind of interesting because I looked at, I also, in that study, I said, well, what about all these, like, these pre-trib people and these post-trib people and these millennials people and like let's look at all of their arguments of why they believe what they believe after we had read it and, and come up with our own interpretations hopefully you know just analyzing it ourselves and let's look and see what like how all these different groups of people that have all these kind of some of them some crazy ideas so like at least i initially thought were crazy ideas but after reading their stuff i was like hey I could see how you could actually think that, right? I, I talked about this on a live stream about the flat earth people, about why it's not good to just make fun of them, why it's good to actually hear their arguments because, you know, I'm not a flat earther, but there's they have some solid arguments. They actually honestly do. Like, it's just that you're triggered by this. You're like, oh, they're idiots. Like, that's your reaction, okay? Just like the, the people in that Bible say, they're like, oh, the, the millennials, those are idiots. The, you know, the, 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 the post-trip guys, those are idiots. Like, that's ridiculous right? They're just triggered by this. 
not because they actually know anything, not because they've actually researched anything or thought for themselves. It's because they've been giving an interpretation of the facts. They've been given one, okay, that they've just parroted and believed. And it's like, like I said, I'm susceptible to this. I am not excluding myself from this, but I want to do you do you a really big favor in life. And I know it's hard to overcome this. And I know that unfortunately, a lot of people that actually need to hear this message more unsubscribed after they watch that video. And that's unfortunate, but I can't, I can't do my, I mean, maybe this video should come out before that one. Maybe that's what I could do, but even still, it's going to be up to you. Like you're just going to have to realize that you have biases and I have biases and the, the best skill, one of the best skills that you can learn in life is the ability to forget what the media is saying, forget what other people are saying, and just form your own real opinion on this. So again, I, I gave that example of the, the Bible study, even though I don't really want to open that can of worms because it's so relevant, because that's what I did was I said, let's just read it and see what it says, okay? And, and I mean, heck, for, for most religions, I think that's probably true. Like for the whole Bible, for, for the whole, you know, Quran, for the whole uh, Vedas, for the whole uh, Bhavad Gita, right? For the whole, uh, what's the, man, I was on a roll, but now I'm, I'm Torah, right? <laughs> for the whole, is there more? For the whole, for Scientology, right? L like, I mean, that one's a little harder. You got to like do the secret handshake and pay some money to, to be able to read that shit. But you see what I'm saying? It's like, you, you got to like actually analyze from your own viewpoint, right? Again, don't belong to the political agenda of some some person, right? You know, some people are like, oh, you're 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 in this. You're, they're, they're trying to categorize me as a Trump supporter, right? As if that's a horrible, bad thing, and that I agree with everything that this man who, who's, who's president says. It doesn't, it, I support him on a lot of things. I support him on not a lot of things. I mean, I'll give you just one instance of one thing that I think is, is kind of ridiculous that, that, that he says, which is he's trying to bring like industrial type of labor back to the US, bring those jobs. Those jobs are gone. They're never coming back. It's ridiculous. Technology moves on. Automation is the way. So, but, but again, again, I, man, I'm broaching so many subjects that people are just gonna, I, I, again, if you're being triggered by any of these things, okay, that's not my fault, that's your fault, right? You have to, and I'll give you one last tip here with this, okay? If you have a really strong emotional reaction again, for a very small amount of data, right? So for example, if the title of a YouTube video triggers you, okay? If you have a strong emotional reaction, if one statement that I say, or one word that I say, or one thing that someone says, or one article that you read, or like, you know, if, if those things trigger you, if you have a strong emotional reaction, you've got a fucking problem. This is a very, very good indicator that you are reacting to the herd mentality, that you're part of the herd mentality, that you're parroting, you're one of those parrots that's parroting what people have told you to think about a thing, as opposed to have really examined it thoroughly and thought about it yourself. Because typically ideas that you have hashed out yourself, they're, they're, not ident they're not tied to your identity. Because if you've really looked at both sides, if you've really hashed things out and you've really examined things for yourself, then you're not as tied into it, right? It's, it's, like, it's, it's like, for example, here, I'll just give you one last example here. If I am betting on sports, okay? And I'm looking at, let's, let's say that I, I am watching a football game and I'm deciding where to bet, okay? And so I look at the two teams and, I, and I'm, my, my concern is to pick the one that's gonna make me the money. So I look objectively at the stats, look at the players, look at the history, look at all these things, and I pick the team that I think is gonna have, give me the best probability and the best odds, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be the winner, it has to be the one where I feel like the, the bookies or the people who are setting the odds are wrong and I can, there's an, there's a, uh, what you call it, arbitrage situation here for me, right? So if I'm doing that, I, I'm not gonna get angry, right? Because it's wh whatever team, my favorite team or my, my not favorite, you see what I'm saying? Like I'm gonna have a very, like I might pick that team and if they lose or if I'm wrong, I'm not super upset about that, right? I'm not like, you, you see what I'm saying? I'm not having the same emotional reaction. And when I'm making that, that choice, right? If someone says, oh, your team sucks. I'm like, well, it's not my team. It's just, it's just the one that I picked logically based on my analysis of the situation. So, I, so it's, yeah, you could say they suck. I don't, I, maybe they do, I don't know. Like, I hope they win though, because I want to make some money, 
right? You see what I'm saying? Whereas if I am a 49ers fan, I don't know, I'm just throwing out a team, okay? And someone says they suck, but I'm a fan. I haven't analyzed, like, if they're going to lose. They say they're going to lose. I'm, I'm, re I'm ready to choke you. I'm, I'm going to fucking get, get in a fist fight. And, you know, you see this all the time with soccer fans, right? So, so, so in that case, that's the emotional band, right? You see what I'm saying? It's like you're on the team. It has nothing to do with logic. It's not analysis. And so that's you know, just a good example. If you're in that situation where you feel like you're, you're, you're cheering for your home team, okay, there, it's probably, you probably didn't pick the, the team that you, you know, is your favorite team, right, based on logical choice. You, you picked it because your, your parents were fans of that, you went to that college, you had some buddies, somehow something happened that caused you to build an affinity for this team and it's, in lo it's an illogical one and you'll defend it to the death. I mean, some people would, but you, you see what I'm saying? And so if you get that same reaction, in some kind of opinion that you hold, and I do it all the time. I, I have to admit it, okay? I try to not do this, but, but I do. Then you really have to say, hmm, is this really, like what's going on here? Like, let me analyze, why would I be angry, right? And then, and again, it doesn't mean that you change your opinion. I mean, you can still hold to it. It doesn't mean that you give up your religion, but it means that you probably need to do a real analysis and figure out what is actually, like form a real opinion for yourself. Like I said in that Bible study example, don't, don't take someone's interpretation of the book of Revelation. Read it. See what it actually says. It'll actually kind of surprise you if you, if you have actually. And, and for a lot of things, this applies. For a lot of things. All the shit you've been told. What if you questioned all of it and you actually either decided that you're not going to have an opinion in it or you're going to read it for yourself and then see what, what results. You'd be a lot more educated of a person and you'd be a lot less triggered in life and a lot less upset by shit. Some people go through their whole life, every day they're like, fucking all this shit is triggering them. They're just like angry, angry, angry. I, that's not a good way to live your life. If that's you, you're the problem. You got the problem. It's not the world. It's not everyone else that's triggering you and is stupid and wrong. It's you. You're the problem. You got to figure this out. Again, I'm not saying you have to agree with people that you can have a, a different opinion again than me we can still be friends I, you know i'll still give you a hug I'll still give you a pat on the back i still love you all right but i want you to use your fucking brain and that's the thing it's like i want you to use your brain all right that's all i got for you today if you like this video if you want to use your brain with me if you're not afraid of getting poked a little bit every once in a while right getting ruffled up a little bit ruffling some feathers Click the subscribe button. Click the bell so you don't miss any videos. Talk to you next time. Take care.